William Howard Taft said of Zion National Park, brilliant colored strata of unique composition, an extraordinary example of canyon erosion. So in these pictures of Zion National Park, what you see is the oceans covered the land that was Zion, and they receded and left sediment behind. And then the oceans came and covered the land of Zion National Park and receded and left more sediment behind. And when they receded for the final time, they left a river that was flowing. And that river started, the Virgin River started digging a canyon. That year by year into that soil, it wore away the edges of some of the rocks, creating this beautiful landscape where this little bitty tiny river has created something incredible that it continues to create today. As John Wesley Powell declared in 1895, all this is the music of water. Do you ever wonder if there's more? If there's more out there than what we understand and believe? If there's more out there than what you experience in your own life? I was watching this movie called Find Me. And it's a movie in which this man, Don, is leading a life that he doesn't know how he got there and he's not sure he wants to be where he's at. He has gone through a divorce and so we only see it from his side and his ex-wife calls him all the time whenever she has something that needs to be done so that he can be with his kids. But when there's something he wants to do with his kids, he doesn't get to do it. And he's working a job that he chose out of school that would be good, that would give him the money he needed to support his family. He's an accountant in a firm, and he deals with spreadsheets and numbers all day long. And the only joy in his life is a work pal named Amelia who challenged his sort of quiet, stodgy ways. She brings life and hope to his existence in this office. But she challenges him. She challenges him to take, start taking adventures. For in all her free time, we see at the beginning of the movie, she is off to explore a new wilderness land to go to the, her favorite wondrous places where she could be. And she invites John to take that same adventure. And she actually gives him a list. Here's the things I want you to do. Make sure you go to a park where there aren't a lot of people around. Make sure it's outside and the walk is easy. No high mountain cliffs that you might be in danger of falling off of. She wants him to get out and explore. But like I said, he's stuck. He's stuck there eating that same takeout meal at night, going to the office and doing the same job every day, wondering if there's more. I wonder how Moses felt when that bush started praying. How was he feeling about going from being a prince of the royal family to being a shepherd out in the wilderness? Did he desire something more? Did he want a different life than what he was experiencing at that moment? When he saw that burning bush on that mountain with those sheep in the background, what did he experience and feel? Partly we know that he said, I've got to see more because I don't understand what's happening, right? He was ready to jump into an adventure, jump into a new life. And so he goes up to the bush and says this, the angel of the Lord lets God know that this is happening, right? That the angel has started the fire. And when 
God sees Moses walking towards the flaming bush that doesn't burn out and doesn't stop, he speaks to Moses. And the first thing he says to him is, come no closer until you take off your shoes. For this, this is holy ground. Which is sort of a weird thing for us Americans, right? Because some of us kick off our shoes when we first walk in the house. But most of us leave our shoes on all the time, right? And so when we go to a culture where it's the tradition to always take off your shoes, it's a little shocking for us, right? To be in Japan where you have to remove your shoes when you enter. And so for Moses, what do you do at that moment with a voice speaking to you, taking you out of a life that you didn't choose, but you ran to because you had done a horrible, horrible act. And God gives Moses a second chance. He doesn't let that horrible act define him, stop him, keep him in that place. Instead, God invites him to recognize this holy moment, this holy place. And invites him on a new adventure. Invites him to take off his shoes. Because God has looked at the pain of his people. And believes that Moses, Moses can fix that pain. Can free them from what has been happening. In the movie I was telling you about. John is stuck for a while there near the beginning. And Amelia disappears. And she leaves him a notebook, and it says, find me. And she gives him the GPS coordinates to find her. And so, for a while, he continues his regular routine. And then he finally decides to hop in his car and start the event. And the adventure she sends him on is there, to Zion National Park. It's the first stop. And she says, I want you to go through the Narrows. So the Narrows in Zion are the area where the Virgin River runs through the rock side and the cliffs. So there have been some pictures there. So when you see the river, it runs through these amazing rock formations that it has dug its way through. For it's the music of Zion is water. And so he he's walking along with all the tourists because Zion is actually one of the most crowded national parks that we have. It's a destination place that people want to go to because of its incredible beauty. And because you used to be able to drive through most of it, you could see almost everything on the drive. Now there are so many cars that they make you take a shuttle. But she knew he would be tentative and scared, but if there were people, maybe he would be willing to jump into the adventure. And so, he gets to the spot where his GPS tells him he's supposed to walk. That the trailhead is right in front of him. And what he sees is water. Because the hike through the narrows that Amelia wants him to take is a hike through the Virgin River, through these canyons. That it's not a land hike, it's a water hike. And so he walks through those canyons in the water. Her request was to find me. I think Moses had that desire in his heart too, right? That, yeah, she were great, but it wasn't all he was. It wasn't who he wanted to be. And so when he was there, it says, beyond where they normally went with the sheep, he experiences the presence of God. He finds that something that he had been missing. That next step on his journey that God was calling him to. And I think we're all invited sometimes to search 
that little bit farther. To find that moment that pushes us to experience the presence of God. So this week, I would say the presence of God for me was Sam and Donna had built the bed and had gotten them filled. And so now we have vegetables growing in the yard, but it's the middle of a drought and we haven't had rain in forever and it's dry. And so I'm telling everybody I meet who are church people that I need water. And the night the vegetables are planted, the lawns pull up with a trailer that contains a water tank and give me seven barrels of water to use to water the plants to make sure that our baby trees survive. The presence of God amongst working through us and with us. God invites us onto that journey to find the holy, whether it's in a tank of water or a 